hello and welcome to the lecture so let's continue with more options on the interactive grid and you know already right so we have seen all those things on with respect to the selection and the validations but there are some things that might be very useful here and there will be a case where we want to edit this in a form which we will be discussing on that which i said earlier and even you want to listen to the changes in the interactive grid let's say if you are changing this to some random name and you want to get those changes you can do that in dynamic action but you can't get the particular element which is you know changed every time and you have to keep pushing those changes and you want to know that you can do that in interactive grid with respect to its you know this api functionalities and even if you want to open this uh, in a model dialog which we had discussed in this button you can create an action over this row level as well let's say you want to uh, an action here at this like an edit in form that will open with respect to this particular row you can do that as well and uh, we'll be seeing that in this lecture so let's start with creating a new action over this one and we will define a global grid object and even the global you know model object at the function level so that we can consume that in our own implementation so let's create one stores model and the stores grid for our uh, you know for our reference so you know that we are having the apex dot region dot which i would write region of stores so s underscore stores is our region and so here we have to use the call which would be get views and grid as the parameter get views and grid so this will return me this one where we'll be using this as the grid object and here we'll have the model and we'll use this as the model object so let's define that and i'm copying this and we'll go to the global setup and here we will create so let's you know start from here let uh, stores is our grid name so we'll put this as stores grid and this would be here i know this is not what we want to define here so we can you know declare that here and we'll store that in the page initialization that would be better because as i said that grid or model and the other things will be initialized on the page change so let's declare these variables here and we'll put stores model so we'll declare here and we will create that over here in this you know this page change event so here i will use over in the stop that will be very you know you can find it very easily so it will be stores model in our case so stores uh, no first we'll put stores grid and we will put that and then stores model so stores model will be stores grid again dot model so this would be very useful now we can consume that in any ig application which we want to use in our page so wherever the events wherever the size we can consume that now very easily once the grid is initialized we can make use of that so now let us refresh and check this in the global level so we can check that because we have declared so stores grid is returning what we expect as we seen and stores model will ret return the expected model so we'll use this as our implementation over here and for adding this we have to use the stores grid and that will be having the you know row action menu so we can 
check here it is visible that's uh, having single row view action menu yeah so here is the row action menu daughter so even we can fetch using this uh, element using the jquery dollar of this one and we'll have a menu object following this and inside that we can get all those things so let me show here so if i have row action dollar so row action dollar is returning me the jquery element which is almost the same as uh, over here which i said so let me copy this uh, yeah let me go again let me copy this one if i put uh, dollar off let's see dollar off this one ash it's an id so i will put this yeah it's returning the same so what we're gonna do is we'll put the previous one the store screen dot row action menu dot menu we have a menu object over there with a parameter as option so that we can get those like a config object which we want to see okay it's not options it's option so i will put the character one so we are getting that even we can see over here these are the things which are specific to this menu this row action menu and here you can see with these items and here you can see that we have the single row view we can see a single row view then a separator then row add row is for this action then duplicate row delete refresh and revert all these are specific to this so we are gonna push this over this items here even it can be achieved with this you know from this jquery object but i prefer to use the apex apis that will be a fine with the application level so even you can use here but we'll go with the you know uh, the level from where we want to start with the apex api so we will copy this one so this menu options and here we will add it over here and we have to use the items array that is an array so we are going to push that with the same thing where we are using the you know toolbar push so we are going to push that with a you know here we are not declaring the action we are going to directly define the action so for that for defining the action you have to put the type as action so i'm putting the type as action and we will put a label here that is the edit in form and we will put an id for a reference because this is not having any action name so we'll put an id so edit in form and we will put one action that is will be the function so whatever is the click is happening on that we will perform any some you know the whatever things we want so we want to open a model dialog we'll use that so this would be focus element and we will put console.log for now to get our focus element okay so we'll see that in action now so we have to get a button action and we have to get the, the label here and this action should be in the console.log so we will save this and we'll see this now so i'm gonna refresh this so this has to be appearing over here and yeah we got a new button and there's no icon that's fine if you want you can add maybe we can add it over here so this would be uh before this right so we can add an icon like far edit so as we seen in this example over here so we'll make use of that so this would be the icon so we'll put far far edit that would be a better one so i'm gonna paste this over here
yeah we got that edit button so edit in form but if we click that we are getting the focus element so this is the focus element from the html it is pointing me to that whichever i am clicking so if i click here it will point me to, so it's a bit you know you can understand so we have to use the focus element to get the data of this you know we need to access this particular uh, instant of this row right so we can use that using the model i mean with respect to you know with the grid i mean not the model it's the grid we have an option over the stores grid that is we can make use of the stores grid and we have an object that is called the get context record so it's here get context record it's a function you can refer over this so if i open the previous one so it stores grid you can see that over here get uh, context record so it's a function which we can use the focus element as the parameter so with that we can get the you know uh, the list of records so if i use this as the console.log so let me comment this and we'll get back this here so if i use this it will take me all the instances of the record so if i click on edit in form it's showing me an array and it's array inside an array so we have to use uh, of zero because that's what we have to do so it's an array in an array and we're getting all the data which we are clicking with respect to that row so first we click the seattle next we click the first row that's online so it's populating and let us uh, you know assign this to a variable and this would be record because we'll be using that to get the record id as well so this is record and we will make use of this uh, thing with respect to a uh, zero element because we are going to access this one as the array and we are gonna get the you know uh, record id right so we have to pass that through the model right so model we have already a reference with respect to key if you remember we used apex.event.trigger and we are passing the key as the you know key object where the value will be the particular to the store id so we have to get the record id so we can use the you know model or get field key and use that again but i have another way that would be useful that would be respect to the stores model because we have the model right so we are putting the stores model and we have get record id uh, function over there so if i use get record id and this would accept me the parameter as the record so that's why we need the record and uh, by default this record id will be seen so we can make use of that console.log again and we will put that so let us clear this and we need not have this now so for confirmation that's why i'm just putting the console.log of record id so now if i click on this i should get the record id okay so we are having an error here so i think that's a mistake in the record id so let us check okay it's uh, having a spelling mistake here it's a stores model and we will now correct it i think it's with respect to the variable change so now we will be getting that the record id yeah so we are getting one and here five so this is about that so we'll make use of this apex dot even dot trigger and that would be apex dot even dot trigger and we are gonna put as the document which we have defined document and open model and as you remember in the lecture so open model and this would be key so key would be now not hard coded it is record id so now we can make use of our functionality and if you want to cross check we have this here 
and with this document as the selector then open model and in this code we are going to see that we are passing with respect to this dot data that can access this key and pass this to this url and that will prepare the url and written that yeah that script to open the model dialog so now let's refresh and see and hope you get that so now if we edit in form we are getting the model dialog and you can see with this one and now with respect to other things we are getting the corresponding ids so as expected so this is about that which we want to achieve it's more useful that we can use make use of this edit in form and gonna be some useful feature even with respect to other cases as well where you want to see some information about the record you can provide something as very useful to the user and that's about that so now we will come back to this you know listening to the change event and that is also a part of this uh, grid page change event we which you want to add so we'll be adding here not here we'll be adding over this one and we are gonna listen to that change right so we are gonna use the model dot subscribe so model as a subscribe object so there we have to you know add our case so let's say if we wanna add so uh, like stores model and we are gonna subscribe this subscribe and we will have to put an object so that would be uh, i'll be telling so this is an on change here there are various objects so we are gonna listen to the change of this and this would have a function on change of this we will have some type and that will be a change this where this one we are going to use this change which we are going to see with respect to what is going to change so first now we'll just put console.log of change and we'll see let me save this now now we will try to edit a record maybe some random data so we can see this line this is what it points out to this console.log of change and this has information on our data everything so what is the field which is changed with respect to page designer name and old value what is the previous value we changed to chicago to chicago's right and that old value is here and even the record which we saw and about the selected record like an array so this is the new updated one and the record id is just the primary key as listed so we can make use of this information and we want to display that's about that and if you want we can add like some you know like an alert if you, your value has changed from this to this or you want to push that to some log or some suppose if you want to track the front end changes whatever the user is changing you can make use of that and do because with respect to adding the dynamic action it's a bit more you know very deep to listen but with respect to this model subscribe and on change it's very useful you can consume whatever you want it's like a change event but with respect to the interactive grid and with a lot of information we have so this is about that i'm not gonna go much here this with respect to your case you can do this as the feature we can you can see and if you want to do more customization you can do as with respect to and disabling a button if you want with respect to the value some case so it's about that so this is about the interactive grid all a lot of things are covered here and it keeps on going and a lot of features are added and added as the apex version increases we'll be seeing more on the javascript part later on and it's about the apex api is more and more in the next lecture